exaltation and our confession and absolution, we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We take a moment of silent reflection on God's word and our own self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you as we ought to have loved you. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have left undone, we have not loved you as we ought to have loved you. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy says, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
of the earth. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows on them they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we now together responsibly read Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, where it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers his outcasts to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He returns the number of stars. He gives all and enemies. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord is our He has to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He wonders the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain to the earth. He makes his grass grow in the hill. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. He is his life and not to strength of the horse. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, and those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To 
epistle reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Or, if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. For I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, but not myself being under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Thank you. 
some so-and-so saint from the 4th century that you don't know about and frankly don't care about. But today is a special Sunday for a reason you all know. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday, where we get to watch, we get to watch the Chiefs take on Tom Brady. Sorry. Super Bowl 55 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hmm. Anyway, I suspect that most of you will be like me, and after today, you'll go home, prepare your meal, and spend the afternoon with friends and family watching the game, watching and waiting to see which team will get to lift up the Lombardi Trophy, which team gets to take home the prize back to their city. And competitions like this are pretty familiar to us. We live in a sports world, and we're used to these big moments for how many of us can forget 2019, watching the Blues, worst in the league, climb back to be the best, and that moment in Boston, watching Petrangelo hoist up the Stanley Cup for the first time. What a moment. We're thinking back further, back to 2011, Game 6 of the World Series, down to the last out, the last pitch for the second time in that game, David Freeze knocks that home run, and Joe Buck screaming over there, we will see you tomorrow night. What a moment. What a great moment to watch. That winning it all moment. And on and on I could go with these moments. And you probably have your own. Your favorite pro sport, your favorite college sport, your favorite maybe even when you were in high school and you played. Your favorite sports moment when you or your team won it all and got the prize. That's a powerful image. An image that we're familiar with. It was also an image that was powerful and was familiar to Paul. And he used it today at the end of our reading from 1 Corinthians. This image of the runner running the race, winning the prize. He uses this image to show the Corinthians, to show you what the Christian life is like. The Christian life is a race, one focused on the finish line. Eyes focused on the prize, the prize of eternal life, waiting there with Christ Jesus. And focusing on that prize, that informs the rest of our life. It informs how we run the race, where you're headed, and how to get there. And now, now it's up for you to prepare to run that race. And again, Christian life is not so different from these sporting metaphors. It's not so different from basketball. If you want to be good at basketball, you can't just start working on your jump shot right away. You have to run suicides till you fall over. You have to practice your free throw so you don't lose the game at the free throw. You have to do the basics. 
the musician who can't just stand up and play the most amazing solo. They have to practice their scales, they have to practice their etudes. The runner can't win a foot race if they don't know how to walk. They have to learn the basics first. If you want to win, you have to practice. No one's born a champion, no one's born a master, no one wakes up with the prize in their hand. It doesn't happen. Perhaps <clears throat> they have to work for it, they have to practice, and so what does that look like in the Christian life? What is the daily drill that you have to do? What is the daily exercise that you do to prepare to run the race? There's a lot of correct answers to that question. Perhaps you always do your daily devotions with your coffee and the first thing in the morning. Perhaps you gather as a family after the table is clear and then you read God's word. Perhaps you pray with your children before they go to sleep at night. Great, great answers. Great things that you do daily. But there are two things that should always be here. If you're truly keeping your eyes on the prize, trying to run excellently, your daily drill has to be exactly that. Daily. No runner with their eyes on the finish line practices running or jogs maybe two out of the seven days of the week. No violinist preparing to do this amazing solo only picks it up once a week. Whoever wins the Super Bowl today hasn't had a two-week break where they haven't thought about football. It's a daily exercise. And it's the same for you. You too have to practice your faith on the daily. It's what everyone does who wants a prize. It's what you do. You who want to finish the race and receive the prize from Jesus Christ himself. And there it is again. In your daily drill, it has to be focused on the prize. Focused on the finish line. Focused on Jesus Christ. Daily reminding yourselves what the point of all this is. Every single day, reminding yourself where the finish line is, what the prize is. And daily, day after day, you get built up a little closer to the prize. But eventually, we'll get tired of just the fundamentals, just the basics. Eventually, the basketball player gets tired of running and shooting free throws. Eventually, the musician gets tired of practicing the scales and practicing etudes. Eventually, the runner needs to shave seconds off their time. But the daily drill doesn't really do that much for that. You need some help to get there. You need some help to get better. You need a trainer and a place to go. And so do you. You need special someone, a trainer, and a special place to train yourself for the race. The basketball player has the gym and a coach, the musician, a practice room, a teacher, the runner, a track, and their coach. And so do you. This may not be a gym, but it serves a very similar purpose. Here in the church, you come to get trained, to get very directed in what you're doing, how you're going to run the race. And you need it. Because, just like any sport player, if you don't get training, if you don't have someone watching, you will develop bad habits. Your technique will be off, something will happen, and you'll never notice it because you won't see it. You need to come here with other people who are training, going to run the same race you are, and see what you are doing. Get some help. Come here, hear the word, get some help. And you have called someone to do that for you. You have a trainer and your pastor. Someone you have called, God has placed here to help you train for this race. Train to run it as excellently as well as you can. So again, after your daily drill, come to get that special training so that you can run the race excellently here, in this place, where you are strengthened and helped. But what's the point? 
Well, the finish line is far away, closer for some of us maybe than others, but it's still a long ways off. What is the point? How do you know if you're running the race well? Well, there are games along the way. No team just shows up at the championship round. The Bucks and the Chiefs didn't just get chosen randomly to be here today. No musician just shows up at Carnegie Hall not having played beforehand. No runner just shows up at the finish line. They pass markers along the way, they play the games, they perform many times before the finish line. And again, it's the same in the Christian life, in the Christian race. But there are many games that you will have to compete in. When your coworker, your friend, all of a sudden, randomly, seems to jump on your back and start testing you about why you believe the Christian stuff, why you believe all that mess. There'll be performances where someone asks you to give your testimony. Why do you believe in this? And as you run, there will be markers, markers that show that you're going the right way. Seeing your children grow up in the faith. Seeing your friends and family get drawn closer, maybe not be as hostile as they may have once been. Markers showing that you are starting to get it. But in a game, there are losses. No one expects you to bat 1,000. No one expects a 16-0 record. When you fall down, when you lose the game, it's not an excuse to sit there and give up. You get knocked down, you get back up, and you face the race again. You lose focus after a loss. Turn your eyes back to the finish line. Fix your eyes on the prize, the prize of Jesus Christ and life eternal. And that's the key. That is central to the race. The entire point of your running is the prize. Every team, every runner plays with the prize in their eyes. You are not running for that winner's wreath. You're not even running for a gleaming chunk of metal to lift over your head. You're not playing for some worldly trophy. You are running for a prize which never wilts, never rusts, a prize which will never pass away. When you look, the prize stands at the finish line. Gleaming and shining just like those trophies. Christ stands looking at you with his eyes focused on you, waiting for you to get there. Jesus is the prize at the end of the race. The one who has already run it, the one who has already won the prize of eternal life for himself. But now he wants to share that prize with you. The prize which will be yours forever. So run the race of life. Walk the Christian life. Do it all with your eyes constantly fixed on the prize of eternal life. And run like you have your eyes focused there on the prize. Daily fix your eyes on Jesus. Get a daily drill that you and your family will do. Act like competitors who have their eyes focused on the prize. Get help from the other runners, the other Christians that you have here, from your trainer, your pastor. Go to the gym, the church, the Bible study, the Sunday school. Get training, get help. We all need it so that we can run better. Play the games, perform when asked, and catch the markers as you run past them. Celebrate the victories, mourn the losses, but get back up, focus your eyes once again on the prize. The prize which you press on towards. The prize that is waiting for you at the finish line. The prize of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And actually, that's where the amen is on my script here, but I have to want to add some, something else to that. Reading through this, it would sound like there is a demand for that 16 and 0, that 1,000, that perfect score, no mistakes. And that is the demand that God puts for you. But it's not what Paul, Jesus, what I 
expect. It's not possible. This side of heaven, this side of Christ's return, it ain't going to happen. You're not going to bat 1,000. You're not going to win every single game. But there is the expectation of excellence. The expectation that you will run, practice, prepare as you can. That is the expectation that Paul is laying out, the expectation that I am laying out, the expectation that you should have for yourselves. Expect excellence. That when you get called at the finish line and ask, what about those losses? What about those knockdowns? What about those failures, those mistakes you made along the way? You can say, yes, they were there. But I ran excellent. I pushed onwards. I never lost focus on Jesus Christ who was waiting for me at the end. So again, I encourage you, run the race excellently. Push onwards toward the goal, the goal of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We rise now as we confess that faith to you, according to the Lord I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the virgin of Mary, suffered in the house of God, and was crucified on the earth. He ascended to the Father, and the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to the Lord, and sent us like a light. Let us pray to the Lord who has built confidently with us. We give thanks to you, dear Father, for sending your Son Jesus Christ into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sins, which we could not overcome. By your word, rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord of the church, Give joy to your servants who, on whom you have laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that by your means many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ and keep our eyes on him. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of the nations, look with mercy upon our president, our governor, and all those who may administer and judge our laws. May they use their authority wisely. According to your will. Lord, in your mercy, we are our prayers. Heavenly Father, give to all Christian homes the endurance that comes from your Holy Spirit, that husbands and wives, parents and children may be disciplined and self controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end of the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable gates of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, we are our prayers. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold mighty over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, and our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us, that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demons, disease, and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you those who are of in any need. For Blake, Lloyd, Jim and Betty, Nedra, 
Josh, White, Rich, Toby, Don and Kathy, George and Liz, Darlene, Lou, Jim, and Aubrey. We also lift up to you those who are putting themselves in harm's way as they, as they care for those who are struggling with COVID. For Mary, Megan, Michelle, Nicole, Karen, Jessica, Nikki, Lisa, Leslie, Jessica, Tina, Nicole, Emily, Benjamin, Mindy, Charlie, Heather, Alicia, and Lindsay. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Bring us in such faith to your holy sacrament that the body and blood of Christ, which atone for our sins, may make us whole, strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil, turn us in love toward your, our neighbor, and preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, while we await the coming of your Son, we remember with thanksgiving those who are gone before us in the faith and are now with you. We especially thank you for sharing the life of Terry Vidal with us. Be with this family as they mourn his passing, and remind them often of the resurrection to new life in Christ on the last day. Keep and preserve us all in the one true faith to life everlasting, and bring us and your people together with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now sing our offertory on the page 13. Remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name be thy name. Thy will be thy name. Our Lord, we give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And yet we are not to give us temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the name of our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all always.
All right, you guys may be seated for a few announcements. And I will first look to the congregation to see if there's anything that needs to be brought forward. All right, there are a couple announcements that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, there are a lot of them, so I will actually just point you to page 23. But if you look at page 24, uh, we have uh, uh, three new couples that are, are joining the church. They're mostly late uh, attenders or a Wednesday attender. But uh, James and Edna Buckeye and John and Janet McCray and Snort, yes, David Snort. He wants to be called Snort. He's been called Snort all of his life, and that's okay. David Snort and Betty Clements, they're a wonderful couple that have, that have joined us as well. So if you have an opportunity to see them in the services, say hi, get to know them, and reach them in the body of Christ with us. Any other announcements that need to be brought forward? And me. Uh, leave the devotions in the back. And uh, those are good uh, little daily drills for you to do. I think that's what I was talking about. Uh, if you're wondering what to know a little bit more about the prize that stands at the end, Jesus Christ, today, uh, this week it moves from God the Father to God the Son, Jesus Christ. So, again, I would encourage you to do that uh, and pick those up. They'll be handed to you on your way out. That's all I have. I do have one more, and that is, I just noticed here, next week, uh, 214 Valentine's Day release for this, uh, uh, the swim the LW Belt group. That's on page 26. You can buy, you can bring, you can do all kinds of things there with that. So I uh, pray your blessings upon LW Belt to receive those gifts. All right, if there are no other announcements, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.